Alright, so. <laughs> All right, the next time you come to the stage, please give it up. Give it up for Jerry, everybody. Jerry! How you guys doing? Thanks for sticking it out. I feel like we're family at this point. I'm just gonna come down here, sit with you all. Come on, get in close so we can get real intimate. You guys, you guys together? I don't know if everybody can see what my shirt says, but what, what's your name? Lee, that's my middle name. What's your name? Elaine. Elaine, are you married? Pretty much married? How, how long? Nine years. Okay, so so Lee is going to read what it says on my shirt. And but you look at look at Elaine when you say it and, and emphasize the first word and this this word. So go ahead. Everything is my fault. Did you hear that? Elaine. Everything is my fault. This is my new first date shirt. I'm gonna wear it on every first date. I'm just gonna get it right out. Up front, full transparency. I want every woman to know I accept full responsibility. Because the truth is, uh, not as young as I used to be. Truth is, none of us is as young as we used to be. I mean, we're older than when we walked in here, right? So, Jerry is my first name, Layton is my last name, but my comedy name is the G Man, G E M A N. But if you're in a hurry, just call me G, I will answer. But here's the thing about relationships between men and women. Women make decisions based on their feelings. And men make their decisions based on facts. Now something about the feelings is that they give women a sixth sense. Women are like detectives. They don't run around investigating things because they know things. When I say detectives, it's like detectives in a TV series, like uh, Blue Bloods, when they have the perp in the cage. The detectives never ask a question that they don't already know the answer to. So gentlemen, don't make shit up. And do not pause, because if you pause for that amount of time, they already know that you're lying. It's a communication thing. Men and women communicate differently. What was that book a few years ago? John Gray, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Men make decisions differently. And men are not capable of making good decisions when they're horny. In fact, I would go so far as to say men cannot make any decisions when we are horny. Case in point. Suppose, just suppose you're having a family neighborhood barbecue and you get sent to the to Publix to pick up an extra propane tank and an extra package of buns, just in case. You walk outside and there she is washing her car in the driveway next door. Samantha. Of the divorcee. Without kids, it's hot. She's wearing a barely covering string bikini. She's tan and she's wet. And she looks over you and she says, Lee, no, I'm not going to pick on you. Dave, are you happy that I'm going to be coming to your barbecue this afternoon? You're already pointing north. And, and Samantha's not one of those women that likes to use the, um, the nozzle, the spray nozzle. She likes to control the flow with her thumb. And she's straightening out the hose. And Dave... Dave's brain has already shut down. She goes, I'll see you later, Dave. Water is spurting out. <laughs> Dave is just looking and thinking, 
just gets in his car. He doesn't even remember at this point. He has no idea where he's going or what he was assigned to do because the brain has shut the fuck down. He can no longer think. He gets in the car. Sweat is popping out on his forehead. He turns the ignition on us like he barely makes it out of the neighborhood. He heads out onto the main road heading to Publix. And he's thinking, God, I hope she's not there when I get back. I hope she's not there when I get back. I don't want to walk in with a heart on. <laughs> so he's driving to Publix and he sees a Chevron convenience store. And he thinks, I can skip the line at Publix. Because remember, the brain is already not working. He goes in and he picks up what he needs and he heads home and he walks in the door and his wife says to him, I sent you to the store for two things. You came back with one. Now the second, he says this. He regrets the words as soon as they come out of his mouth. Well, hey, hon, one out of two ain't bad. That's like a 500 batting average. I'd be a shoo for the Hall of Fame and the Majors. So ladies, if you're out shopping with your friends, and you turn the key in the door, and you hear strange noises coming from the living room, and you walk in, and you see your man, your mouth drops, the second your shopping bags drop and you see your man furiously stuffing used tissues into every corner of the couch, trying to zip up without pinching himself and flipping down his laptop cover, don't get angry. He's doing it for you. He's just trying to make better decisions. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. My time is up. Give it up for Sinclair, for Ramon, for the wait staff. Make sure to give them good tips because you want to be allowed in here next time. I appreciate your sticking around as long as you did. I am Jerry, the G-Man Layton. Thanks again. All right, Jerry. Left the bottle of water. All right, never mind. <laughs> oh, we got a treat for you guys.